Hey guys, welcome to Living 757. Uh, it's good to be here. Good to see yes. you, lovely, lovely ladies. Got us kind of matching and everything, right? Well, you know, you just decided to do your own thing. I'm huh? green today. Look, <laughs> nice I'm and all green. green today. It's Christmas in July. That's 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 what we're, she just left me hanging. This is just okay. It's too late. You know what? Uh, I shouldn't even be giving you a pound because if you guys were paying attention to last week's episode, we played a, a water challenge game, right? And at the end, we said the loser would have to wear the cockroach uh, costume, right? And um, there's somebody here that really lost. That is right, Quincy. I think someone, someone that I'm looking right now has to be in a costume today. Yeah. Ashley? I don't know who you're talking about. I'm allergic. What do you allergic mean you're to, allergic? Allergic to, to what? To not cheating? To <laughs> costume. Uh, okay, okay. Um, I think production is talking to me. Oh, we actually have the video of the <laughs> proof that you were cheating. Let's nice. Let's check this out. I love these. What a great, great package, Ashley and Karen. Like, I love these from Cox. Like, I <laughs> it was not supposed Ma to drink the water, Ashley. You okay. have to fill the cup. If you drink it. So I'm going to need to talk to HR because what happened was I was thirsty, so I drank my water. You, during a challenge. That is not, the, that's not, I mean, I know that we have problems with cheating, but that was so <laughs> wide open. Usually we sneak and try to hope the camera doesn't catch us, but you were wide. You were straight wide up open. gave a cockroach a concussion and that during was... our very first episode ever <laughs> because you were uh, cheating. Quincy, is that the water that we have from the toilet? I think she did have the cup from the toilet water. <laughs> well, you know. YOLO, well, but they have a great amount of One thing that I, you didn't do this time, you didn't pay because you didn't have the custom on. So I'm sorry, Ashley. You are in debt with us. Yes, yes in you one are. day. <laughs> okay, and you two are in debt for the 783 times you've collectively cheated since we started well, the show. Well, we don't, you don't have any proof. You have no proof. So I'm so sorry. I'm sorry yeah. you're going to excuse me. I just so no happened to put all our segments up on YouTube. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to find all of them. Have and fun. create a montage. Oh, my God. But this it is... might take an hour. So it might take the whole show to get all of your cheating moments Cheaters out. never win. Well, that is amazing. Like, uh, you know, we're going to continue doing games and I hope next time. You don't cheat again. But speaking of games, you know that we have an amazing game. A Disney and more game show is coming to Virginia Beach. This is going to happen next uh, the Tuesday, July the 12th, uh, September 13th also. It's going to be the whole month. Look at that. It's amazing. And this is going to be on 16th Street, Virginia Beach Boulevard, uh, 23456. This phone number, if you want more information, is 757-797-4020. And the time is from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And I think this is for everyone. For all families, the tickets are very affordable, $18, all ages, thank you. Uh, $18, mm -hmm. very affordable price, yeah. and also $12 for the little ones. Can, can I, hold up, you know what, I know that we're going <laughs> off script, but that first clip that they showed, that looked like one of our camera guys. Can uh, we go Kevin. back and see that it? I like didn't see Kevin. it. Kevin, <laughs> if you look, the guy that was on stage. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. <laughs> looked just oh, like no. Kevin. I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to yes, Kevin making it up. <laughs> like, y'all haven't seen Kevin, but we know who he looks like. That was oh, Kevin. Oh, man. <laughs> this is an amazing Disney activity. And actually, since you love Disney, this is something that I, you must do and go. I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody watching, if you haven't gotten out to the Virginia Beach Amphitheater to see a summer concert that yet, you need to get there. <laughs> The summer of concerts at the Veterans United Home Loans Amphitheater is in full swing. There have already been some fantastic shows at the Amphitheater. We have some great ones coming up on Saturday, July 23rd. Dave Matthews Band is going to be storming the Amphitheater. He's a hometown boy. He's from right here in Virginia, Charlottesville to be exact. So definitely get out there and see Dave Matthews. Exactly a week later on Saturday, July 30th, Jason Aldean, the party yes. god of country music himself, will be taking the stage. And he has special guest Gabby Barrett along with him. And then finally, rounding out the concerts to start off August on Friday, August 5th, 
Go check out Ario Speedwagon. Ooh. What a great show that's going to be, you guys. Like, I, I can't get over the variety of music at the amphitheater yes. and how just fantastic it. all the shows are. The staging's great. The mm -hmm. lights are great. Hold like, on, but you, you've think, experienced it in person, right? Like, yes, you recently she went like a, a couple concert? times already, right? I have. I, yes. I think I went to concerts there the last two weekends in a row. Right, yes. right. And so the last one that you went to was what? Jewel and Train. Mm -hmm. And they put on such an amazing show. We actually have a little video of it. What's up, y'all? Ashley here with Living 757. We are here at the Veterans United Home Loans Amphitheater for Jewel and Train. Thank you so much, Live Nation, for having us. We are so excited to be here. <laughs> I can see, Ashley, that uh, you have so much fun and what a great season for Live Nation and right. all the concerts during this summer. Amazing. So, look, we invite everyone to go and check it out on the website because they have so many artists coming, still coming Live this Nation. summer. LiveNation.com. Yes. yes, very yeah. easy. Um, and before we uh, get the show started, we have to do a quick shout-out, give a quick shout-out to a former ODU baseball standout. This guy, his name is Vinny. I'm going to get his last name right. Pasquatino. Hope I didn't mess it up. He's number nine. He plays for the Major League uh, Kansas City Royals, and he hit his first home run. Congratulations to yes. you, my man, representing the 757. Now, we hope to hit a home run on this show because we got a great show ahead, including I get a chance to throw a pitch to a great in baseball. And also our amazing friend, Patrick Evans Hilton, delight us with an amazing summer recipe. And we have a special performance by Gifted Hands. But first, stick around because you don't want to miss Brothers in Law. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Living 757. What an excitement today's segment because, Brad, we have you for the very, very first time here in the studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thank well, you. it's a pleasure for us because we have so much fun. You guys being friends from the show for so long. So, like, uh, it's amazing to have you here in person. But Thank let you. me tell you something. Every time that I, you, we have you here, we cannot stop singing the jingle. <laughs> it's so like a half man in half man. So, we're gonna check this out. You got Patricia you to got sing it. on camera. <laughs> Brothers in law, half men in half Yes, you know there what? you go. No, but, but remix. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were thinking in the green room before the show that maybe we should kind of, you know, give our versions of maybe you can use a, a new mm -hmm. jingle. Because whoever right. you use, I mean, she's brilliant. But I think I, I think I have something. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'd love to hear it. Oh, Are right. you ready for this? Because yeah. this is like okay. gonna be All right, Q. Q is okay. first. <clears throat> One day you may fall call Huffman and Huffman. Mm. You don't like that? <laughs> okay, okay, some credit for so Quincy. It was a little lack. No, that's good, man. I mean, because people may fall. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, now it's Ashley's it. turn. All right, so mine's a little different. Quincy, I'm going to need you to give me a beat. All right, I'll Ooh, do that for you. This is serious. Okay, you ready? Okay. All right, ready? Quincy on the beat. <laughs> They're the brothers in law. If they were sharks, they'd be great whites like dogs. If you get hurt, you ain't so tough then. Make sure you call Huffman and Huffman. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. Wow. So she took it to another level. Okay. okay. She did. Well, for sure, nice Ashley took it Thank to another you. level. Oh my God. But in my opinion, Brad, I think I should stick to one, the one that you have already. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't I mean, know. That's pretty tough. That's a tough one, right? Yeah, that's a toss-up. <laughs> no. Was it my beatboxing? Yeah, yeah. It was well, a combo. Yeah, it, was, it was a combo. Was a combo. Teamwork combo. makes the dream work, right? Yeah. She couldn't have done it without you. Obviously. Right. <laughs> now, on a little bit more serious note, luckily, most people will never have to know how a personal injury case goes. But unfortunately, some people will have to find out the hard way. And yeah. luckily, we have you, the expert, here to help <laughs> us. First of all, how do you even know if you have a personal injury case on your hands? Uh, call us, and we can let you know. Yeah. Um, no, anytime you're injured, by someone else's negligence, then you potentially have a personal injury claim. But you should always call the attorney, get the advice, tell them what happened, and then we can guide you in the right direction. So why is it important to call a personal, personal injury lawyer versus talking to another insurance company? <laughs> uh, that's very, very important. Yeah. yeah the, the other person's insurance company is not looking out for you. Mm. They're looking out for them, for their best interest. Got gotcha. you. And you've got to be careful because one of the first things they do is they ask you to give them a recorded statement. Mm -hmm. And in that recorded statement, they're going to try to get you to say something that might hurt your case. Uh. And you have to be very careful with that. You really do. Because you could say something that would just knock the case out completely. Mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have a claim. Secondly, if you get past the you know, that statement, that recorded statement, and they're willing to accept responsibility. Mm -hmm. Then they try to pay you a very minimal amount of money. Been there. Right on the first day. <laughs> yep. And the danger with that is that you don't know the full extent of your injuries right. that first 24, mm -hmm. 48 hours. A lot of times those injuries really don't develop until later. Yes. And they know that. Mm -hmm. So they're going to offer you a little bit of money. They're going to dangle that out. Yes. And try to get you to take that because once you do, that's it. Yes. They're off the hook. Well, You're out of luck. Now that yeah. you mentioned, Brad, some kind of, we're talking about kind of money, how much it costs to have to, to actually hire an uh, injury lawyer? Yeah, so uh, injury lawyers work on what we call a contingency basis. Okay. So you don't pay anything up front. It's uh, a portion of whatever settlement that we're able to effectuate for you. That's actually really right. good to know because maybe some people can be afraid to call a lawyer. But this isn't a very good explanation. Like, uh, you guys don't worry about it. Call it. I think that's a great point because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know that. And they go, well, well I don't know if I want to call a lawyer. Yeah. You know, they could be expensive. But it doesn't cost anything to call us. Mm. And even after you hire us, there's no payment up front at all. We're only paid when you're paid, when we settle the claim. Mm -hmm. okay. And if we can't help you, if we cannot settle the case, exactly. then there's no fee because we weren't able to help you with that. Well, that's so, very good got... to know because I heard that before from other friends yeah. and, you know, they're afraid to do that. So yeah, yeah, don't be afraid. Right. <laughs> now, yeah. if someone watching or one of their loved ones needs a personal injury attorney, how can they get a hold of you guys? Uh, they could call us at 757 422 Help. I help. see it right there. Four, two, two, I love help. it. Or you can go to our website, HuffmanHuffman.com. That is amazing. Oh. Thank, you. Yes, Thank you. Thank you so much right for there. stopping by, and we appreciate yes. you. Finally seeing you face to face, and I it's love that shirt. Yes, to see you. I love, love that shirt. Love the shirt. <laughs> and I hope you're coming back again, Brad. Thank you so much for our great, great tips. And someone else that have great tips for us, but in the kitchen, is our friend Patrick Evans Hilton. So let's check this out. Welcome to summer. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Of course, I could do with all, all of the heat and hazy humidity, but I digress. It's one of my favorite times of the year because it's perfect to make refreshing light cocktails to enjoy, to have people over on the patio, to go to festivals outdoors, and to enjoy all the seasonal flavors like berries. Right now, there's all kinds of berries coming into market. There's blackberries, there's blueberries. You might still find some strawberries. And we're gonna make a delicious cocktail called a blackberry fizz. Now, you could also do this with blueberries or any other berry too, but we're gonna use blackberries because they're so fresh and in season. Look at these. We love to go to farmer's markets, you pick places. We love to go to Westside Produce in Norfolk. And I'm gonna put some of these down in a old-fashioned glass. I'll show you the glass here in a second once I get these in. You know, just a few here. And then in the glass, I'm going to add some sugar, just regular granulated sugar. And then I'm going to add some 
lemon liqueur. You could use lemon juice if you want, but our friends at Chesapeake Bay Distillery had this delicious lemon liqueur. It's kind of like a limoncello. It's fabulous. So we're gonna put just a tad of this. Now all of these recipes for this and everything else we're gonna talk about, it's gonna be on my blog. Go to virginiaeatsanddrinks.com. That's virginiaeatsanddrinks.com. Or our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash virginiaeatsanddrinks. And then we're gonna put in some vodka. And this also is from our friends at Chesapeake Bay Distillery, their Blue Ridge Vodka. Oh yeah. And I'm just gonna kinda muddle these berries. Muddling is just putting the fruit in there and mashing them up. I just have an iced teaspoon. This is gonna break up some of the fruit. It's going to mix those juices with the liqueurs, with the spirits, with the sugar. I wanna stir that up just a little bit so that we can make sure and dissolve that sugar. And then I am going to add some soda water. That's what gives it the fizz. Fill that a little bit there. We'll put in some ice. This makes such a beautiful color also. And top it off with a little more seltzer and we'll give it a fresh mint garnish. This is just picked right from our mint outside. And look at that. Now, if that doesn't say summer, I don't know what is. It's light, it's refreshing, it's beautiful. Mmm, and it is delicious. So I also wanna to talk to you about doing something that'd be really fun for a brunch or for entertaining out on the patio. I have made these angel biscuits here and I'm gonna give you the recipes for that. And then I'm also making something called chocolate gravy. Now, if you haven't heard of chocolate gravy, it's something you'll find, especially in Appalachia. And I'll give you the recipe, but it's cocoa powder, it's sugar, it's flour. I've stirred this up until it's nice and thick. Look at that. I'm gonna move our little burner over, and then I've got some coffee ice cream. You could use vanilla ice cream. You could use chocolate ice cream. I'm going to put that right on top of the split biscuit. Yum, 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 yum. And we're going to drizzle on that chocolate gravy. I've also made a homemade creme fraiche. That's a really delicious cream. Um, it's not terribly sweet, but it is very rich. Mm, oh yeah, so easy to do at home. It's, um, it's basically half, uh, half and half, and then also some yogurt. And I'm gonna put that on top. And then, who doesn't love sprinkles? This would be wonderful, absolutely wonderful, like I said earlier, at a brunch or for dining outside as a nice, refreshing dessert on the patio this summer. And before I, we go, I want to tell you a little bit about the Norfolk Fest events, uh, Latino festival that's coming up. It's one of my favorite festivals because you get to go out there and get to samba and party and everything. It's Saturday, July 23rd. It runs from four until 10. It's absolutely free. You can have dancing. There's live entertainment, all kinds of music, but there's food. And isn't this fun? I made a version of what I'm calling a taco salad. These are miniature tacos and then some diced tomatoes uh, with some peppers on a bed of lettuce and Look at that, how fun that little miniature taco is. Mmm, not just fun, but absolutely delicious too. So that's all I've got. It's always such a treat to visit with y'all. I hope everybody has a great summer and cheers. And there you have it, Patrick. Thank you so much for always giving us cool ideas, no matter what season it is. Uh, thanks for Virginia Eats and Drinks. You can visit that.com, right? Now, uh, Patrick, I probably could use one of those drinks that you made because uh, my jingle was horrible, okay? I need to drink my worries away. But guess what? After the break, we're gonna dig ourselves out of some trouble, maybe, mm -hmm. or not. This should be interesting. Stay right there.
Welcome back to Living 757. Now, ladies, we already know it is the summer season, which means pool parties in the backyard. But before you go putting that in-ground pool and trying to impress your neighbors, you got to make sure that you pay attention to the gas and the electric lines underneath, right? And here to explain a little bit more about safe digging, we want to welcome back to Living 757, Nikki Turpin from Virginia 811. How are you doing there, Nikki? Yes. I'm wonderful. I'm so excited to be back with you guys. So happy to have you yes. back. Yes. We are so excited to finally have you here in studio. Yes. And just in case anybody is wondering, we each have a tub of dirt in front of us. Um, Virginia 811 makes sure that we dig safely. So there are random things that are put in this dirt and we're gonna <clears throat> stick our hands in and help demonstrate why you should always know what's under the ground before you dig. Okay, while well, you guys talking with Nikki, I'm wondering why I'm the only one that I have gloves. What are you doing? Tick tock, huh? tick tock. What are you doing, Quincy? I'm calling Virginia 811. <laughs> I'm gonna call before. Oh, this is Patricia's phone, nice bedazzled but phone. But they're already here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, so I have to ask you, okay, because sure. I forget, can you explain to me and to the viewers what exactly is Virginia 811? Absolutely. Virginia 811 is the one call notification center. So we actually take the phone calls or your web tickets, and then we farm that out to the utility operators or contract locators, and they're the ones who actually come out and put the paint on the ground oh, so wow. that you know where the underground utilities are. That wow. is amazing because we need to know what is under. So, for example, Nikki, mm -hmm. if I want to dig and I want to go and plant something in my backyard, uh, should I need to call first Virginia 811? Yes, you should absolutely contact Virginia 811 before you're doing anything. I always say if you're turning up dirt in the state of Virginia, you mm -hmm. need to contact Virginia 811. Okay, so oh. one of the reasons oh. why... Oh. <laughs> Found a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt the turtle. Put the turtle down. This has a meaning for me, and it's matching color. Yeah. Green. Oh, that is so big. Now, speaking of finding things in the dirt, I did bring a couple things with me. I wanted to show you specifically uh -huh. for homeowners. So, if you were digging around um, with your pink gloves and you found this, <laughs> this is tracer wire. Okay. And there is metal inside here with a plastic coating, and that is with. This is actually a gas line. Oh, okay. wow. Yes, yes. And so the gas line, um, that's how the locators can come out and locate it, right? So what happened if I'm digging and I find this exactly in my backyard? Perfect. I have to stop. What, you, I call yes. you guys first, right? You would call us, and you should know that it's out there. But the one thing we want to tell homeowners is make sure you do not mess with this. You leave this right exactly where it is. This is how they're finding that gas line. Nice. Now, have you run into any situations where someone did hit a gas line and, and, and is it a catastrophic situation or is it something where it's, it's just a bad situation? Sure. So um, anytime we hit a line, it could be a catastrophic situation, especially when we're talking with natural gas. So I brought um, a gas line that a homeowner actually mm -hmm. nicked um, oh. with a shovel. And I just want to let you know that if you happen to nick one of these and it's compromised by 10% of the width, um, that could result in a gas leakage. So if you took a butter knife to this mm -hmm. and you just went real quick, real quick slice, that would compromise it by 10%. Oh, wow. And this homeowner, um, instead of contacting the utility company or us, actually tried to put it back together with some super glue. Oh. You can see here. Oh, no. You do not do that. You never, ever repair anything. You always contact us or the utility operator or emergency personnel. This can be no. an example of actually a picture, like if I'm digging, I wanna make some, I wanna plant something on my backyard, and then this can be that tube, like yes. I see if I find it, like I have to stop, right? That's a like good a, point, Patricia. See, like it's right here, mm -hmm. it's digging under the dirt, and this can happen to anybody, right, Nikki? Yes, it sure can. And also, when the paint is on the ground, there is a two foot on either side tolerance zone. Mm -hmm. So you may see, this like this, right? or you can see it like this. Now, really quickly, Sure. backyard projects can get really mm. expensive. How much does it cost for you guys to come out and mark? Best part, it's free. What? Yes, it's free. And I always say it's your get out of jail free card. So if anything happens and you've been digging within that tolerance zone, you've got the marks on the ground, you're good to go. Oh my God, what is oh. all these? <laughs> Look at that. So real quick, if you find no. If you find candy in the ground, is it okay to eat no, it? No, Quincy, it's not okay <laughs> to eat a candy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test them, see. Yeah. Ugh. This is actually good. Why did you get snacks in yours and nobody else did? Oh, I stole it from Oh, I did. Oh. 
I did. I got goldfish, Hershey's, oh Kit God. Kats. Bless you. I think Thank these you. used How to be Swedish fish, you guys, but like a Social media, phone numbers? Yes, we're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. You can contact us at 811. Just pick up the phone and dial 811. Or you can go to our website, va811.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. You already have it, guys. You can call in Virginia 811. So don't do it yourself. Please call the experts. Yes. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Now, Virginia 811 is so integral in all of the communities that it serves, just like the Cox family of businesses is. 34 by 34 is Cox's initiative to empower 34 million people by the year 2034. And Hampton Roads was lucky enough to be one of only 10 road tour stops. Let's take a look. Good morning, Team Virginia. All of us working together to empower 34 million people by the year 2034. That is a beautiful thing. And this initiative ties all our Cox businesses, meaning all the companies together. by 34 is Cox's enterprise-wide initiative to empower 34 million people by the year 2034. And it's huge, and it's the reason why we're here today, and I'm so excited about this initiative. We work for a phenomenal company that puts people before profits, it puts our communities before everything else that we serve and we live in and we give back to them. It's our focus, our commitment, to make sure that we give where we live. Bring that check on up here. We are donating from all of you in Cox Enterprises in Cox, Virginia, $10,000. Team for the purpose. That's right. I don't know how to say thank you. There aren't words to say how much this means to us. Working for an organization that is able to look as far down the road as what Cox is considering as they're building you know these new ventures and plans um, it's it's just it reminds me how rare you know the family like ours is you want to work for a company that has passion very similar to your own and and as I said I'm very passionate about the environment Cox is in, uh, passionate about the environment so for me it's a perfect match the impact that we can make from our 34 by 34 for people in an environmental space is really far-reaching, just beyond the environment as well. about where we want to focus as far as where we want to put our monies and our energy into. Um, looking at programs that are STEAM supportive is definitely something that's you know showing that we care. Cox is bringing this to their employees and encouraging them and incenting them to get involved with things that are making a great impact on our world, our communities, our world, and that there's so many avenues for us to contribute. So everyone has an opportunity with all the different avenues. from Cox. Thank you so much for all what you do for our community. Now we have to go to commercial break, but coming up next, Queen C throw a piece to a baseball legend. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Living 757. You know, Ashley, that I love acting and I think 
all of us have an actor inside. Our next guest, she is amazing. She is a teacher acting, also a coach and an advisor. And today, she's going to be sharing her personal story with all of us. Let's welcome to the show, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Jones. How are you, Jocelyn? Hi. I'm, hi, I'm very well. Nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you too. Like, uh, thank you for being with us today. And we are so excited to have you, Jocelyn, because you have an amazing, an amazing background. And you are an acting teacher, a coach, advisor, an author. You have everything. But uh, first of all, <laughs> I have a question. How would that come up for you to be an acting coach? And do you coach celebrities? <laughs> Uh, well, I will start by telling you how that happened. Um, you know, I was raised in an artist community up on the Hudson River Valley, and I was blessed. My mother was a very good cook, and she was a great entertainer. And so the dinner table was surrounded by these extraordinary, really extraordinary uh, artists, painters and musicians and writers and dancers. And they were my first heroes. And they were the people that influenced my life uh, going forward. So my dad was an actor mm -hmm. and I followed in his footsteps and became an actress. But you know, very early in my career, uh, I started teaching and I've been teaching for 30 years. Oh, wow. And I do coach celebrities, <laughs> but I can't tell you who they are. I know you're going to answer me that. Like, uh, I know it's okay. You don't have to tell me who, which celebrities. It's I fun. know. I was waiting for it. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. Now, you have recently written and released a book. Can you tell us about it? I can tell you about it. Uh, you know, when I went to write a book, uh, I didn't really want to write another acting book. And, you know, I'm spiritual. I'm a spiritual person and my teaching involves, you know, spirituality in the sense that inspiration to me is spiritual. Right. And so I train actors in a technique that allows them to ask questions and listen to that voice inside. And when their heart beats a little faster, I go there. That's the choice that let's explore that, that excitement. Okay. And then when I was writing the book, I discovered, you know, you can apply this technique to anyone mm -hmm. who's looking to connect to that voice inside and make their life more creative and more on purpose. And so that became very exciting to me. So I tell the stories in my life that led me to the lessons that I then fashioned for my actors or my students or the celebrities, these lessons, okay. that I now give those techniques to anyone really uh, who wants to connect to their heart, who wants to ask themselves, why am I here? You know, what, what am I doing in this life? You, you deserve a dream. Right. And uh, sometimes you have to kind of quiet yourself and take yes. your own counsel. Just listen to you. You know best. And we all know that voice. We yes. all have heard that voice inside that tells us this is the best way to go. It gives us our best advice mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it, it leads us in the right direction. That is amazing, Jocelyn, because being an actor is not an easy role. Sometimes you have a lot of this courage and the way that you just explain it, it's like a, so much connection with your heart and what do you believe. Right. So I love that. I love your words and I think you're doing an amazing, amazing job. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I think art should be fun. Yes, and exactly. I think, you know, creating and joy kind of go hand in hand. Yes. And I think life should be that way, too. I think, you know, your life is like, you know, riding a horse. It's your, it's your first masterpiece. I believe there's an artist in everyone. Mm -hmm. And your first masterpiece is your life. I love it. You know? <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jocelyn. Thank you. We yes. really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a great pleasure. Have a wonderful day. You too. Yeah. Well, baseball is America's national pastime, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And what most people might not know is that baseball is also very intertwined in our history. And 
when we take the legends that play baseball and the history, mm -hmm. what we're left with are living legends who excelled at the game. And Quincy had the, had the distinct pleasure of meeting with one of those legends. Hey guys, I'm outside in the park in Norfolk, but not just any park. This is where it all began for one of 757's own living legends, Sam Allen. He played professional baseball for the Negro American Leagues. And today, I had a chance to pay him a visit. All right, so I'm sitting across from a living legend right here in the 757. We know him as Sam Allen. Now, Sam, you come from the Negro American League. Like, you were a star, baseball professional star in the Negro American League, but you're from right here in Norfolk. Like, right. tell us, like, what was it like growing up in the Hampton Roads area back in, back in the 30s? Yeah, well, I started school in 1942, and, uh, we used to play during that time. Baseball was king. Right. You didn't have the NBA. Uh, you didn't have the NFL. But you had baseball. Right. So, so tell me a little bit about like, like how was it growing up during those times? Like as a kid. I mean, I was, I guess, about a year old. My grandfather used to carry me to see the baseball game. Down before 1947, the only one that you saw at professional baseball were the whites mm. until the Negro League teams came to town. See, when I was about three or four years old, I knew the signals. I could tell the, uh, the grown people would give me that quarter, say, show me how to carry a ball, and I'd show them the three fingers carry a ball. And then when I was up to about 10, 11 years old, mm. then we started carrying, I started carrying my glove out to the park. That was how we made our money. We'd catch a foul ball and we'd sell it to people going to the game. They'd give you 50 cents and they could go in the game with the ball. Mm. See, so that was, that's how I made my money. Now, Mr. Allen showed me the memorabilia he has stored right here in his living room. And I have to say, I was blown away. This is the 1957 championship team that I played with uh, the Kansas City Monarchs. Yeah. I, I led the league and run scored that year. And this is uh, the picture that's at the, at the Harbor Park, where they put me in the baseball shrine. My picture's on the wall at the ballpark. All right, so is this, this is, picture right here? Yeah, 19, I mean 2019, where they... You famous, man. I don't know about how famous I am. <laughs> Sam, I gotta ask you, like, what are some of the fond memories you can share with us during the time that you spent spending in baseball. Negro League. Yeah. Well, whenever we played in New York, at Yankee Stadium, or Evans Field, I always had a real good day. The last game I played in the Yankee Stadium, I played against the Monarchs. I was with the Memphis Red Sox. Mm -hmm. And I hit a triple out by the Monument. That was an old Yankee Stadium. Yeah. And we beat the Monarchs one, one zip. And uh, the last game, we played next to the last game when I was with Memphis against Birmingham in Evans Field. Mm -hmm. And Satchel Page, All-Stars came in the next week and played the last game before they tore it down. Mm -hmm. But that day I hit a couple of home runs at Evans Field and I had a real good day. But I always had a good day in New York. So you want me to sign this card for you? Yeah, if you can sign it, I think that'd be awesome that I can tell my dad. Yeah, you met Sam Allen. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna trouble you and ask you to put the year that you signed it because the year changes everything for me. Yeah. No one can take this You don't me. need to date the time. No, I don't need to oh, date. <laughs> this is cool. This is history right here in my head. How does it feel because you still get contributions from MLB based on you and your brother's contributions in the Negro American League? It makes me feel Great, because the last time I played baseball competitive mm -hmm. in the league was 1959. Oh, wow. And this is 2022. <laughs> wow. And they still recognize me. You know, it's still to be recognized, that's a long time. Yeah. Well, I understand that there's a baseball field nearby where you actually started it. Yeah, let's head out there. Okay. 
this is the field that I started out with. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is the beginning right here. Okay. I'm bringing the heat. All right. With some uh, dress pants on. Mm -hmm. Oh, they go behind the back. I got the signal. Mmm. Oh, outside. Oh! <laughs> I'm through. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> it's hard to believe he's in his 80s, and it's clear he hasn't lost a step. The game is still inside Sam Allen. The dream started right here in Norfolk, Virginia. A man from humble beginnings who went on to make his mark in a forgotten piece of America's favorite pastime. Still living today on a legacy he built many decades ago, it's an honor to tell a piece of history. That was such a great experience, ladies, just to be a I part of uh, just to be a part of history. But while Sam is on his way to catch the MLB All-Star Game, we're on our way to break. And when we come back, we got a music treat, uh, a gift of sorts. Don't want to miss it. Right back on Living 757. Welcome back to Living 757. Being born without hands may seem like something that can hold someone down. But Manuel Mitchell, the <laughs> rapper from Virginia Beach, has done the complete opposite of that, smashing records and doing awesome things with his song. And we are so excited to have him here in the studio with us today. Thank yeah. you for joining oh us. Thank you for having me, guys. Yes. Thanks for being here, bro. This now, is so awesome. <laughs> first off, how did you get started in music? Oh, man, I started music when I was 13. Uh, my older brother had came to me and said, hey, I want you to rap what's on this paper. Mm. And so uh, I started rapping at 13. I started writing for myself at 15 because I was going through depression yeah. and suicidal thoughts. So I used it as a coping mechanism. Nice. Amazing, and we all can see that uh, you are very blessed and gifted in so many ways. But uh, tell us why you choose your performing name, Gifted Hints. I didn't choose it. My uh, god sister had gave me that name back in I love 2012. That. I was doing uh, Christian rap, and so nice. they named me Gifted Hands just to say that even though I don't have physical hands, God gave me hands that you can't that's see, right. but I'm reaching out to pull people's spirits up. Love it. And that's what you're, like, you have reached out to the masses, okay, Manuel? I mean, you have a song that you're going to be performing in a few, in a few minutes here yeah. called uh, Why Not Start? Absolutely. Now, this has garnered so much attention, major respect all over the internet, all over the web. <laughs> yeah. Like, how are you handling this, this, this new exposure and everything, man? Oh, man, this is so fun, like... I just get to be myself, yeah. you know, and I get to just tell people that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay. It's okay to not have it all together all the time, you know. Got you, got you. So that's what the basis of the song and the concept came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just saying that you know, even though you go through so much of life that may be upsetting you or maybe trying to put you off, mm -hmm. it's never too late to start what you believe in. I love, I love that. I love, I love, I love the message. No. Yes. Yeah, the, and you've had numerous supporters reach out to you and your team to yeah. tell them how much your song has impacted their life. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> there, are, there are just no words that you can use to uh, explain the impact that the song has had because there are people who are being uplifted all around the world uh, saying that, you know, I've been hurt, but your song is helping me nice. get out of that hurt, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And when you are helping people do that, you know that you're contributing to what a lot of music artists hope that their music does. Like, a, yeah. like it's, a, yes. it's a breakthrough and you get the people's hearts. So thank you for the song. Thank you for yeah. it. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah, <laughs> we love you. We love you. We cannot wait to hear you singing your song in a little bit. But before, we have to say goodbye, guys. And please, please, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram under Living 757. Also, and if you want to send us anything so you can be on the show just like my man Emmanuel here, yes. uh, go to share at Living 757 and uh, we will get you guys on the show because mm -hmm. we have to keep putting 
Something in the water on exactly. this trip. Exactly. Because we yeah. are the coolest Basically show in town. Here in the 7 by 7 Coolest show in town. Now, do you have any gigs that's coming up before we get out of here? I will be performing in Ohio uh, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Excuse me. Right, right. So you will be in Ohio, man, and I know that you are going to impress them just like you have impressed us. And I can't wait. Yeah, indubitably. <laughs> good, good big word. I'm going to be using that word a lot. Uh, you know, I cannot wait. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so, you know, we still got a little bit time, like a small mm -hmm. amount of time. What word of encouragement would you have for anyone with a disability that may be inspired to do something great? There's no one who can be you. You were created for a reason. You are you for a reason. Don't be afraid to stand out and be different from the world. You don't need to be like everyone else in order to be loved by yes. everyone else. Yes, oh my yes. goodness. <laughs> and yes. what a fantastic way to close out the show. <laughs> Before we go, we're gonna leave you with Gifted Hands viral wow. hit, Why Not yes. Start. Yes, good job. Take it away, my man. And now, now. I'm telling you now, I don't care if it's a race, I'ma set my own pace on my mark. Ready, set, go. I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I hadn't done my part. Like, say it ain't so. Barely even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard. That was before, but now I figure why not start. I figure why not start. Hey, the biggest smile on my face when I'm around. You can't really tell that I'm hurt. Really do my best when out in public, keep my head from tilting down. But deep inside I feel like a burden Everybody steady in my ears saying I should keep going Not realizing that my heart is torn Some days I wake up excited cause I know exactly what I'm doing Other days I still wish I wasn't born mm -hmm. But it's cool cause I've dealt with the pain If I wasn't so solid then I would melt in the rain And the cycles I was in they do nothing but just keep on repeating So I felt insane and I held tight to myself as ways Wouldn't seek help cause I would self-medicate but when you look at me, just know that it's never too late That's why I'm telling you now I don't care if it's a race, I'ma set my own pace on my mark Ready, set, go I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I hadn't done my part Like say it ain't so I barely even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard That was before But now I figure why not start I figure why not start Hey, it's safe to say I found my rhythm don't you dare feel sorry for me, I am not a victim We got problems and we fix them It's just for me, music navigates the pain out my system Beating the odds, I love that If I ain't learning my lessons, then I mustn't have had enough yet And Lord knows I can't be upset Cause every single time somebody tries to help, I change the subject Force myself to go it alone I'm surprised I haven't broke any bones Take it easy, they don't even need to see me like this I hid myself at home and I held tight to myself as ways Wouldn't seek help cause I would self-medicate But when you look at me, just know that it's never too late That's why I'm telling you now I don't care if it's a race, I'ma set my own pace on my mark Ready, set, go I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I hadn't done my part Like say it ain't so Barely even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard. That was before, but now I figure why not start. I figure why not start. I'm telling you now, I don't care if it's a race, I'ma set my own pace on my mark. Ready, set, go. I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I hadn't done my part. Like say it ain't so. Barely even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard. That was before, but now I figure why not start. I figure why not start, ayy I don't care if it's a race, I'ma set my own pace on my mark Ready, set, go I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I had done my part Say it ain't so Barely even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard That was before But now I figure why not start I figure why not start, ayy